Hi. We are members of the GRACE Project, a community engagement team based here at the Open University. Our aim is genetics research awareness via community engagement. But you might be wondering, what is genetics? You may have heard about DNA, which carries the genetic information in our bodies. The complete set of all our genetic information is called the genome. Each person has their own genome. In fact, nearly every cell in our bodies has a copy of the genome, mostly found within part of the cell called the nucleus. Here, the DNA is tightly wound up into structures called chromosomes. Even though no analogy is perfect, a simple analogy can help us understand by drawing parallels between genetics and something more familiar. We can imagine the nucleus as a bookcase full of recipe books and the chromosomes as the recipe books found inside. We have 23 pairs of chromosomes, so that's 23 sets of recipe books, where in each set, one book is from your mother and one book is from your father. So you inherit one from each parent. Each chromosome, much like a recipe book, contains many sets of instructions for our body to make the chemicals we need to live and grow. These chemicals are called proteins, and the sets of instructions used to make them are called genes. Genes can be thought of like the recipes in a recipe book, with each given the instructions for a different dish, or in the case of a cell, a different protein. Proteins carry out many important jobs to keep our bodies working, such as insulin, which lowers our blood sugar levels after a meal, and keratin, which makes our skin and nails strong and waterproof. Genes are made up of DNA, and DNA is made up of combinations of four types of building blocks, which we represent using the letters A, C, G, and T. The order of A's, C's, G's, and T's in a gene acts like words in a book, spelling out instructions which are read by the cell to make a particular protein. This is known as the genetic code, by which the sequence of DNA letters in our genes tells our cells which proteins to make, how to make them, and what their role is in the body. We all have roughly the same types of genes and have more than 99% of our DNA in common with any other person. But the less than 1% difference in our genomes makes each of us genetically unique. We inherit two copies of almost every gene, or recipe, along our chromosomes as we get one from our mother and one from our father. These gene copies may be identical to each other, or they may be different versions of the same gene with slightly different DNA sequences. In the recipe analogy, your father may have raisins in his cookie recipe, but your mother may have chocolate chips instead, whereas you might get one of each. Changes in the DNA sequence of a gene may give instructions to make a slightly different protein that works in a somewhat different way in the body. This is like comparing different recipes which both give instructions on how to make a chocolate cake. The recipes may use similar ingredients and steps, but small changes along the way mean some cakes might be more chocolatey or less fluffy than others. Most genetic changes have no effect or result in some of the common and harmless differences we see between people, such as whether someone has brown or blue eyes. However, even small changes in the DNA sequence of a gene may have a big impact on the protein it produces, either by stopping it working correctly or by making it in a very different amount. If we imagine a gene as being like a recipe for a trifle, a single change to the letter of your DNA may mean the difference between putting some custard in your trifle and putting some mustard in your trifle. This shows how changes in our genetic instructions, sometimes known as mutations, can make a big difference to how a protein functions, or in this case, how delicious your trifle is. If this protein has an important role in the body, these changes can lead to problems with a person's health and development, which is known as a genetic disorder. As we inherit half of our genetic material from each parent, we are more likely to share the same genetic changes with members of our family. 
This explains why we tend to look like our relatives and why diseases often run in families. Certain genetic changes and health conditions are also more commonly seen in people from the same ethnic group due to their shared ancestry. However, not all genetic changes are inherited from our parents. Just like how words in a recipe book can get changed when it's reprinted or the ink is smudged, genetic changes can happen over a person's lifetime as their genome is copied or damaged. Genetic disorders may be caused by changes in a single gene like the trifle example, but these are quite rare. Other genetic disorders are caused by changes in the number and structure of chromosomes, such as whole or large sections of chromosomes being copied, missing, or swapped around. This is seen in Down syndrome, which happens when someone gets an extra copy of chromosome 21 in their cells. If we imagine a chromosome as being like a recipe book and the recipes inside as genes, a change in chromosome structure might mean that the pages from different recipes get mixed together in a new order. This can cause a big issue, as anyone using this book to make a simple trifle may instead end up making half a trifle combined with half a shepherd's pie. However, most common diseases like heart disease and cancer are not caused by a single genetic change. Instead, certain genetic changes in many genes throughout a person's genome can increase their chances of developing a particular disease. But having a genetic risk doesn't mean that somebody will end up getting the disease, as our environment and lifestyle choices, such as diet or smoking, also play an important role. This is like how a final dish depends on more than just the instructions given in its recipe, but also how hot the oven runs or the freshness of its ingredients. So, although our genetic makeup is part of what makes us who we are, our surroundings and the choices we make also have a big impact. If you enjoyed this clip, feel free to follow the links on screen for more interesting articles and free courses from the Open University.